This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? I know you can't see that because I put it in the wrong place, but what we're going to be talking about today is ESR, Equivalent Series Resistance. We're just going to touch on this lightly, okay? Because capacitor function is like a postgraduate level study. It's, it's like damn near quantum physics, so we're going to touch on the important points. So capacitor ESR, and we're pretty much just going to talk about electrolytic capacitors today. Because one of the factors that can increase ESR is the dielectric. So what is ESR? Well, like I said, it is the equivalent series resistance. So if you take a look at this circuit we have here, we have an AC sine wave, and then we have our capacitor. Ignore this for a moment. And we have a resistor. So this one here that says ESR is just like another resistor in series with our capacitor. And that's bad. You're introducing resistance, you're introducing noise, because capacitors like this are used largely in uh, power supply filtering, which you want to be a clean signal. So how do we measure ESR? But usually with an ESR meter, of course. But all it's doing, it is applying an AC signal through a known resistor. Say this, I don't, I don't know what it's using, but let's, let's say it's a uh, 1K. And let's say we have uh, 5 volts. 5 volts, one, we have E, we have R, now we can find I, that, we, that gives us um, the current of our circuit, knowing the current of our circuit, knowing the resistance, we can divide the voltage by the resistance of the capacitor, and that will give us our ESR. ESRs are highly dependent on two things. Those two things are frequency and temperature. So let's start with temperature first. This is a very crude graph. This bump should not be here. It should be a smooth curve like that. So in minus 20 degrees C, you might have an ESR of somewhere between 250 and 500 mega ohms. But when you get to 60 degrees C, you've got almost none. It almost sounds like the capacitor is warming up. And it kind of is. The next thing that we need to talk about is ESR being frequency dependent. So if we take like a 0.22 microfarad capacitor, here we have an ESR in ohms maximum of 10, minimum 0.1 ohm, a frequency of 100 hertz to 1 meg. You'll notice that we have, say, an ESR here of about 2 ohms at 100 uh, hertz. Down here at 10K, you know, we're closer to 0.3 ohms. And here at 1 meg, yeah, it hasn't gone down much. Let's, let's call it 0.2 ohms. So they're, fre they're frequency and temperature dependent. That's all I wanted to tell you. So, I got this here bag of electrolytic capacitors, which I assume are pretty much Pazotora, which is Italian for garbage. I just watched Donnie Brasco. Great movie. Like this, here's a whole bag of various electrolytic capacitors I think paid like $1.98 for. So I am 100% certain that they are, they're fakes. There's a 330. Yeah, let's get a big one so it's easy to see. 470. Go that big. Yeah. Here we go. 220 microfarad. And these are uh, 22 volt. I'll open, these. open this bag here. Alright. So we're going to have a look at these. Let us first 
put them on a meter and check their capacitance. So I get my meter ready here. And the first thing you want to do for your testing any capacitors is you want to make sure they are discharged, shorted out. So we're going to take the first one, just short out those leads. And we'll connect her up here. Yeah, let's see. Oh, these are the. You know, I love Probe Master probes. They're fantastic. But these little micro grippers are just crap. Everything wants to bounce out of them. You see what I mean? One second, please. Okay. I have changed to these Kelvin clips. And if I pull these wires out, and I've held them here like this a little bit. We're getting about 10 nanofarads of capacitance just out of the leads. And that's okay. Because we're going to account for it. It's not going to matter anyway. All right, so I've discharged all these. I've plugged them in here. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll measure these up. And we'll see what we get. And like good scientists, we are going to chart our results. Two thirty one point one nope point one second one oh, come on oh you gotta be god oh, man I'm having a day. Can you tell? I'm actually having a good day, but this is just frustrating me at the moment. Okay, uh, next up. Two twenty-five point two. Two two five point two. I'm gonna put them back in here just so we keep them in order next one yeah, he's thinking about it two twenty two point seven these are surprisingly all pretty good And the final no uh -uh. there we go to 26.8 Alright, so I did the math and our average is 226.06, which is in 3% of the capacitors I bought. For the home shop, for the hobbyist, that's not a problem. Professionally, I would like to see less than 1% variance, but then you're going to have to buy real capacitors, not AliExpress specials. Now we're going to break out the high dollar equipment and have a look at the ESR. Number one, you're up first. Looking good. 
Now, I'm not using any leads on these because, you know, leads induce capacitance that could also affect the ESR. So this ESR is 0.35 ohm. Let's have a quick look here at what our uh, temperature is. Oh, it doesn't have a built-in thing? It's about 68 degrees. That's what I keep my air at. Alright. Number two. Focus, come on. 0.39. This has totally screwed up my video. I expected these to be all uh all totally crappy for the price, but they're not bad. I don't quite know how to feel about that. 0.4. Point four. I've noticed that the voltage loss across them has been pretty consistent as well. Point three four. Okay. Once again, I did the math. We've got point three seven six ohms. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, we have a look at an ESR table. 200, 220 microfarads at 10 volts should be 0.9 or less. Let's cut that in half so it should be 0.4 or less. It's in there. But now, whoops, sorry, bumped the, bumped the camera arm. Now I'm wondering, what frequency is this thing testing at? Let's find out. I think there are a couple ways to do this. Yeah, I think I'm going to be able to get those in there. One second, please. All right, let's see if we can get a frequency like this. I don't know what this is going to do. Because of all the different stuff going on in here, it, this this may not work at all, but we'll see what happens. I just want to see the frequency. I may have to put a capacitor in series. Let's see what happens. I don't think that's going to work. Because what's happening is it's just sending out various pulses to identify whether you're looking at a capacitor or a resistor or a diode, depending on what comes back. It's not sending out a consistent pulse long enough for me to get a frequency on, but that's okay. I certainly hope that this has uh, given you some knowledge into equivalent series resistance, also known as ESR. There's also ESL, and equivalent series inductance, and all these things add up to the performance of your electrolytic capacitors. All right, guys. That's it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. 
Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, uh, check out the Patreon if you're not a member yet. A buck a month allows us to buy super cheap Chinese capacitors and other things. <laughs> That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.